Welcome back to Green is Good. We have John Knutson with us today. He's the Vice President of Business Development for Motive Power Systems. Welcome to Green is Good, John. Well, thank you. Hey, John, before we get talking about all the great things you're doing at Motive Power Systems, can you please share with our listeners a little bit about the John Knutson story and how did you even end up here as the Vice President of of Business Development? Well, um, I have an education in in engineering, and uh, my my very first job out of engineering school was with an automotive-related company. Um, You've probably heard of Winnebago Industries. Sure. Uh, Sure. (laughs) <laughs> went to work and designed uh, RVs and motorhomes for uh, about the first 10 years of my career. And uh, one of the first jobs that I had there was to work on a team to develop a uh, a very lightweight, um, small, fuel-efficient front-wheel drive motorhome. Uh, we actually worked with a company in, in France, Renault Motors, uh, who supplied the platform for that, and, uh, mm. and we did the rest. And it was a great project, had a great time, and I guess you could say it, it really hooked me on uh, on trying to develop fuel-efficient vehicles, uh, on-road vehicles. <laughs> and so from there I moved to a, a company called Utilimaster Corporation in Indiana, and that company develops uh, delivery vehicles for large fleets, fleets such as UPS, um, Frito-Lay, Federal Express, uh, the United States Postal Service, and so on. So I spent the next 20-plus years of my career as Vice President of uh, Engineering and Product Development there, overseeing the, uh, the development of commercial vehicles. And many of the projects I worked on while I, were the, while I was there um, included uh, fuel-efficient powertrains, alternative powertrains, alternative fuels such as uh, hybrid electric, such as uh, CNG, and also worked on a couple of uh, all-electric vehicle projects. Hmm. So uh, Motive was a, a very natural move for me <laughs> to come over and, and actually focus on the uh, the electric propulsion system for uh, commercial buses and trucks. And speaking and that's where I am now. And speaking of Motive, then tell us the Motive story, please. What when was Motive founded, and why was it founded? And uh, give a little bit of the background on Motive Power Systems. And for our listeners out there that want to follow along and learn more about Motive Power Systems, you could go on their beautiful website. I'm on it now. It's www.motive.n-o-m-o-t-i-v-p-s.com. M-o-t-i-v-p-s. Dot com. Give us a little bit about the, the, the mode of background, uh, John, please. Well, okay. Um, I've only been with the company for uh, not quite a year yet, so I, I'm not, I wasn't there at the beginning. Okay. But uh, Motive was founded in 2009. Uh, the founder's name is Jim Castellez. Um, we are in Foster City, California, so uh, that's in the San Francisco area. Right. And... Uh, Jim started the company um, to uh, to focus on the commercial trucks and buses in this country. He he looked out and saw that there were eight million diesel trucks and buses operating in the United States, and many of these vehicles were ideal candidates for electri- electrification. And uh, also saw that the electric vehicle companies all seem to be focusing on small passenger vehicles and ignoring the uh, the commercial vehicle industry. So uh, Jim decided that rather than to build one specific uh, niche vehicle for the commercial vehicle industry, why not develop an electric propulsion system that can be adapted to fit a large majority of these commercial vehicles? Gotcha. So that's what he set out to do. And what makes Motors approach to the electric vehicle design different than anything you've seen before? Well, um most electric vehicle companies, or most companies that have uh, have developed electric vehicles, if you look out there, they develop a ground-up electric vehicle, one particular vehicle. Then they take that truck or that bus to a large fleet, and mm-hmm. they present it to them, and they say, here it is. Mm-hmm. And the fleets, uh, the big fleets such as UPS and others, they have worked for years developing and refining a vehicle design that fits their application very well. Mm-hmm. So they look at this new vehicle and they say, you know, it's it's very nice, but can you make it two feet longer or can you put a, a sliding walk-through door in the cab? And the electric vehicle company says, well, 
no, this is it. So Motive doesn't design or build vehicles. We start with an existing gas or diesel vehicle, one that our customer is already buying and using, and then we work with the body manufacturer or the chassis OEM, and we create the, an electric propulsion system kit. We use this kit to convert the existing chassis to an electric drive, and then we install the body. So this collaboration allows the customer to get exactly what he wants, and it doesn't require him to change the way he works out of the vehicle. He's getting the exact spec that he had before, only it's in an electric drive. Hmm. So your technology is both scalable and modular, uh, modular because of the, the way it's designed and the way um, you know, it's differentiated in the marketplace? Absolutely. Interesting. Yeah, we, uh, you know, just just as an example, uh, sure. the the system that Motive builds. Yeah. Um, you know, we're, rather than trying to build the whole truck and be experts in every aspect of it, we we focus on the powertrain. Okay. And we we've, we've developed this this very modular um, electric powertrain control system to use commercially available battery packs and motors and to uh, package them into a particular vehicle, and we can scale this system up and down very easily. Okay. For example, um, we have a small electric school bus that's built on a Ford Econoline chassis, a relatively lightweight school bus. Okay. And we also have a 60,000-pound uh, garbage truck running in the city of Chicago. Hmm. Both of those vehicles use essentially the same uh, electric powertrain kit. Now, obviously, the, gu- the garbage truck has a lot bigger electric motor and has a lot more battery packs, but essentially it's the same system. Hmm. Um, I want to go back to the garbage truck and the school bus, but I want you to explain to me, you know, there's an explosion now of electric vehicles, John, that have become very popular, whether it's any of the big brands, the Ford or GM brands, or the the disruptive up-and-coming wonderful brands like Tesla. Um why is, you know, explain the differentiating um, technologies and scalability between commercial trucks and buses being uh, one segment of the marketplace versus electric vehicles for personal cars. Where is the, the needle going to move the most and where is the greatest change possible and why? Well, you know, if you if you look out there in the vehicles you talked about, the Tesla and others, they're, yeah. they're great great vehicles. Sure. Um, but you know, if you, if you think about uh, electric vehicles as your as your personal use vehicle, mm-hmm. it's really not a very good fit, at least not today. Um, there's there's an, a term out there that I think everybody's heard called range anxiety, which means yes. uh, if you have an electric <laughs> car. You can only drive it so far, and then you have to plug it in for four to eight hours before you can go any further. So it it makes it pretty impractical to take an electric car for any distance. Right, right. Um, and and as opposed to that, electric the commercial trucks and buses in commercial fleets, um, if you think about how they're used, they typically start from the same place every morning. They drive almost exactly the same distance every day, and they return to the same place every night. And then they sit there overnight and do it again the next day. This is a perfect duty cycle for an electric vehicle. You you have no range anxiety. You know exactly how far you're going to go, so you drive right. the vehicle and you and you put the right amount of battery capacity on that vehicle for that range, and it works. That's so. And not only that. Yeah. Um, and th- another thing about these these commercial vehicle um, route profiles is yeah. that many of them, such as school buses yeah. or de- delivery fleets like yeah. UPS sure. or garbage trucks, they are starting and stopping almost constantly throughout their route. Right. So this this is great for a system that's on virtually all electric vehicles called regenerative braking, which captures that braking energy and puts it back into the batteries. So, uh, you know, for those reasons, and then one final reason that I'll bring up for yeah. uh, for the uh, commercial fleets is that very often these fleets park the vehicles side by side in a large terminal overnight, and 
charge them up. If they're electric, they would charge them up. This right. makes them very good candidates for a uh, a new term that is that is growing out there. I don't know if you've heard of V2G or V2B. That, that stands for vehicle to grid or vehicle to building. Explain what that and means what, to our listeners, John, please. Yeah, what, what that means is that excess battery capacity sitting in that building, um, the public utilities value that quite a bit. Ah, public okay. utilities have no place to store their electricity when it's not being used. Okay. So if they can write a contract with a fleet, who's got a large number of vehicles, which means a large number of batteries right. sitting in one place plugged into that that grid, that utility grid, that says if the utility needs it, that fleet will give that electricity back and put it back on the grid. Ah. A lot of those fleets, a lot of those utilities will uh, will pay quite a bit of money to a fleet to have that uh, avail- available electrical capacity, storage capacity. So... Uh, that's another advantage to the fleet. Gotcha, gotcha. For our listeners out there who just joined, we are so lucky to have with us today John Knutson. He's the Vice President of Business Development for Motive Power Systems. To learn more about Motive Power Systems, please go to www.motivemotivps.com. John, let's go back to an earlier topic, the electric garbage truck that you have in, in Chicago and the school buses. Share a little bit about those two projects, those two uh, um, you know, ongoing uh, systems that you've set up and how you've set them up and the benefits of having electric garbage trucks, electric school buses in operation, both environmental and other benefits that accrue to our society and the people at large for taking our buses and trucks now to battery electric? Sure. Um, let me talk a little bit about the, the refuse truck project first. Yeah. Um, Motive contracted with the city of Chicago a couple of years ago to build up to 20 of these battery electric garbage trucks um, for use in the city. Mm-hmm. And we, we delivered the first one uh, last spring, early, early this summer. Uh, that vehicle is currently in operation in in South Chicago, um, in picking up garbage in the inner city um, and doing quite well. Um, it was a uh, a pretty interesting project, uh, you know. As I as I just was talking about, a garbage truck due due to its duty cycle is a very good candidate for electrification because of its its route and its duty cycle. However, uh, a garbage truck is a pretty complicated vehicle. So uh, setting that up to be electric was quite a challenge. You not only have to uh, propel the vehicle down the street, but all of those moving parts on a garbage truck, the, uh, the compactor, the tippers that pick up the garbage cans and dump them into the back of the vehicle, um, what they call an ejector that, uh, that pushes the garbage out the back at the end of the day, those all had to be set up to run on electricity as well. So a pretty complicated system. So uh, as you can imagine, there's a lot of battery capacity on that vehicle. Right. 60,000-pound full-size garbage truck. Um, but it is set up right now, and it is running, and it has a range of about 60 miles, which for a garbage truck in the inner city is plenty. So uh, it's it's been doing very well. Um, I've I've been there a couple of times and, and gone on a route with it, and uh, it's, it's pretty impressive. Um, not only the... Uh, the lack of, of the diesel emissions, um, but also the lack of the diesel noise of a, mm. a refuge truck driving through your neighborhood in the morning. Great um, point. Uh, That's great. And kind of interesting to watch. The, the, <laughs> the noisiest part of the uh, garbage truck right now are the cans banging on the back of the truck. <laughs> and um, and so, what's how long does this test go on? And what's what do you what's your visibility? Uh, is it is the goal and the hope? to roll out more electric garbage trucks in Chicago and other cities in the coming months and years ahead? Uh, absolutely. Um, and we are, uh, we are monitoring the performance of this one very closely. Uh, we have a, uh, a computer mo- installed on the vehicle wow. that boots up every morning when the vehicle is started, and we access that computer remotely from our headquarters in Foster City, California, 
and we monitor the performance of that vehicle throughout the day. Um, we can we can measure everything that's going on in that vehicle, and uh, so as we go, we can refine the software. In some cases, we can refine the electronics and some of the other components of the vehicle to uh, to perfect it for the application. So. Uh, Using that information, we expect to be building a lot more of them in the coming months and years. And for our listeners out there, there's hope for quieter mornings and a cleaner environment with your trucks in their neighborhood. Absolutely. And then let's talk about the, um, the, the two electric school buses that you have in operation. Where are they in operation, and what are the benefits of the uh, EV school bus for the district that they operate in? Those school buses are operating in the Kings Canyon School District, Hmm. which is in Reedley, California. Hmm. Um, Reedley is a small town just south of Fresno yep. in the San Joaquin Valley. Right. And the first one, uh, the first school bus got there in, I believe, about March of this year. And so it uh, was picking up kids every morning through the remainder of the school year. And uh, the second one has just been delivered just very recently. So just as this school year um, starts off, they now have two of them to use. Um, and, uh, you know, the, the San Joaquin Valley, as a, as a lot of people know, is one of the uh, the worst air pollution uh, problems in the country right now because of its uh, its location and its environment there. And so that, that district was very interested in, in getting electric school buses there to uh, to monitor their performance, to to see how they work, and to hopefully uh, acquire some more in the near future. Got it. Yeah. Well, that is that's that's a that's very hopeful because, as you say, the the valley suffers from some of the worst inversion in the United States, and uh, all the uh, the polluted air gets trapped in there in the Central Valley, which is otherwise a, a beautiful part of this country and one of the greatest ag belts in the world. And to have your uh, two electric school buses there, that's really great. Uh, and I hope that also continues to spread. We're down to about two and a half um, minutes uh, left in the show. And I would love you to just share some of your thoughts on where Motive is going besides school buses and uh, electric garbage trucks, which is very hopeful and really encouraging for all of our listeners. Um, where, where do you intend to take it beyond that in the coming months and years, John? Well, you know, I talked earlier about some of the large fleets, uh, UPS and some of the other delivery fleets. Certainly they will be targets. There are a very large number of those vehicles in operation. In fact, we are uh, working on a project right now to develop a uh, a delivery vehicle. It's it's called a walk-in van in the industry, but the large box trucks that you see uh, driving around the neighborhoods delivering packages or laundry or or uh, bread to the uh, convenience stores. So that that's certainly a target. Um, shuttle buses is, a, is another vehicle that we, we have some ser- shuttle buses in service right now as well that we have just recently delivered to a customer in California. And, um, and we'll be building a number of, of them as well in the future. And there are also some... Uh, some real interesting off-road opportunities that uh, where we have been contacted by some companies that have some particular uh, issues that they deal with where electric vehicles might be a real good solution. Uh, for example, uh, one company uh, builds mining vehicles. Hmm. These, these are large vehicles that drive down into the underground mines every day, hauling uh, the miners down and down there and back and hauling the product out of the mines. Um, and one of their biggest issues, as you can imagine, um, if you're driving a, uh, a large diesel vehicle down into a tunnel under the ground, is uh, air quality. Gotcha. So, uh, you know, electric vehicles is certainly a, a, a good uh, solution or potential solution for that type of vehicle. So that, that's an example, and there are a number of others that we're working on as well. Perfect. Well, John, thank you for your time today. We really appreciate about hearing about our future and our potential future with battery electric trucks and buses coming to a neighborhood or a city near you. For our listeners out there that want to learn more about Motive Power Systems, please go to www.motivemotivps.com. Thank you, John, for proving that battery electric trucks and buses are our future. You are truly living proof that green is good.